Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Paula Fox, and I have the privilege of being one of the teachers here at Agape Worship Arts School of Music. So today I'm going to summarize our three worship studies verses for this month that I'm calling the practices of praise. So let's begin with prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the privilege that we get, God, to study your scripture and to learn about what praise means to you. God, I pray that the key concepts from today's lecture, God, would just bless you and penetrate our hearts, God, and challenge and encourage us to continue to live out our praise in spirit and in truth to you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Our first verse this month was Exodus 15, 20, which happens right after God led the Israelites across the Red Sea on dry land, but submerged Pharaoh's horsemen, horses, and chariots underwater. So actually, let's start at verse 19. It says this, For the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancing. Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, she said, for he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider he has hurled into the sea. So here we see Miriam, a prophetess, grabbing a tambourine, causing all the women to join her with their tambourines, and they all started dancing together. She declares out a song and praises God for the mighty acts that he has done, the mighty miracle, and it causes her sisters in Christ to join in on it too. Oh, how I love a good praise party. So the key concept for us in Exodus 15, 20 is that praise engages. Miriam chose to worship God in the miracle moment and not dis diminish it or dismiss it. She could have chosen to be worried about the next part of the journey, but she stopped and thanked God for what she had just witnessed. You know, sometimes we have moments like Miriam where we see the miracle right in front of us, and there are other times where we don't. But like the song Waymaker says, even when I don't see it, God, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, God, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. So music ministers, I believe God has called us to engage in praise at all times, when we see it, feel it, or when we don't. And for some of you, God will ask you to be like Miriam, who leads others into engaging in praise to God during their miracle moments too, because God, well, he's always at work. Now, the second verse that we studied this month is from 2 Samuel 6, verse 14, and it reads this. Okay, verse 14. It says, And David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. Okay, so here we see that the key concept is that praise is expressive. David's not holding back his praise here. We know that 1 Samuel 13, 14 says that David was a man after God's own heart. So here in this verse, he's dancing with all of his might. In verse 12, it says that King David went and brought up the ark of God with gladness. So I can just imagine David beaming with joy, dancing his heart out, shouting out praises to God, maybe working up a sweat like a good day at the gym but all out of gladness to God. So what about you, music minister? Are you expressive in your praise? Now, of course, depending on what church you go to, okay, you may experience different expressions of praise all around you for your specific church. But what God cares about most, right, is our heart. So when it's just you and Jesus, are you expressive when you worship him? Do you let yourself be free to lift your hands bow your knees, jump for joy, shout aloud exclamations of praise to God. You're worthy, Lord. You're mighty, God. You're good. All of this is acceptable to our God and is encouraged by him in the scriptures. I pray that our praise is expressive and that we help others to know and live out this truth too, just like David did here in scripture. 
Okay, so that leads us to our final verse, Luke 19, verse 37, which says this. Okay, verse 37. It says, as soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, this is Jesus we're speaking of, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen. And here's what they shouted. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So our key concept to this verse is that praise responds. All right, as Jesus was about to come down from the Mount of Olives here, the people erupt in joyfully praising God with loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Just by one sight of seeing him off the edge of the cliff standing there. You know, it makes me think of others like Zacchaeus, a short tax collector who climbed a sycamore tree just to get a glimpse of Jesus as he was walking through a crowd. And Zacchaeus ended up lucking out because Jesus invited himself over to his house that day to chat with him. Praise does respond to the Lord. Even the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, we know that because of her faith, she responded and said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be healed. I think about the story about the friends with the, well, there were a group of friends, but their friend was a paralyzed man. And because of their faith, they said, you know what? We haven't been able to make our way through the crowds to bring them to Jesus. So we're gonna go ahead and make a small hole inside this roof so we could bring our friend to the top of it and go ahead and bring him down, lower him down to being right in front of Jesus as he was preaching. And that day, that paralyzed man got healed. So I believe that praise does respond to the Lord and it hungers for him. As we see in these stories that I described, we can't be numb, lazy, or apathetic, which just means to have no interest or enthusiasm. But we can't have that when we praise. No, God is a, is a God who is worthy of all of our praise. That should excite us and get all who know Jesus as Savior excited too. Let's be music ministers who respond to Jesus and hunger for him. All right, well, I look forward to hearing about what you have learned from these three verses. So here's your assignment. You are to write one or two paragraphs about what resonates with you the most about through these three verses, Exodus 15, 20, 2 Samuel 6, 14, and Luke 19, 37. Summarize your thoughts, and we look forward to hearing your reflection soon here at Agape Worship Arts. Let's have a great rest of the season. God bless you.